How Basketball Saved My Life is sponsored by The Hall at the Railhouse, Norman's premier event space in the heart of downtown. Weddings, receptions, corporate events, luncheons, banquets, proms, parties, and more. If you're looking for a place to celebrate life, we hope you'll choose The Hall at the Railhouse, located in downtown Norman. This episode is brought to you by Chris Express Drugs, located in South OKC. For all your sports medicine needs, call 405 435-3950. Again, that's 405-735-3950. They are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and closed on Sundays. This episode is also brought to you by Emmy Labs. First, they partner with the State Department of Health to bring you free COVID-19 tests. And now they have partnered with the State Department of Health to bring you free COVID vaccine tests. So make your appointment today at www.emmylabs.com. This episode is brought to you by Chris Express Drugs, located at South OKC. For your sports medicine needs, call 405 435-3950. This episode is also brought to you by Emmy Labs. They have partnered with the State Department of Health in Oklahoma to bring you free COVID-19 tests. Now, they're also bringing you free COVID vaccines. So go to www.emmylabs.com to schedule your appointment. That's a major move. Major move. Yes, sir. Welcome to another episode of How Basketball Saved My Life. I'm your host, the Easy Button. And your boy, Twan and Dom. And we have a very special guest in here for y'all today, Brandon Walker. How's it going, man? Nice to meet you, man. My man is a linebacker at OU, and he just finished wrapping up his freshman year. And we about to get it in. Time to drill him. Time to drill him. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so y'all who don't know, that's Oklahoma. Oklahoma. University. People trying to get it mixed up sometimes. These Ohio cats. Ohio. <laughs> Ohio cats. Speaking of Ohio, did you ever want to go there? Absolutely not. <laughs> you got to say that. Right yeah. answer. It's cold. No, 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 I can't do that. I had to stay home. But it's definitely too cold in Ohio. It's too cold. Bro. It's so cold in Ohio. It's one of the places I walked outside and turned around and walked back in. Like, wind smacked me. Bah! I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm not coming back out. Not for the rest of the day. Yeah. It was it was that cold, bro. Yeah, we had a dude on the team. He's from Ohio. And uh, it was real cold here. Like, probably last December. Yeah. yeah. He just was walking around with no shirt on and saying, this is nothing. He goes, Ohio, it's way worse than this. I was like, oh, goodness. He ain't wrong, but he's still tripping, though. No. <laughs> Can't be walking out here with no shirt on, B. You tripping. Whoever you are, you tripping, B. All right? So, like, bro, when I was in Ohio, I remember it was so cold. And then I came to Oklahoma. I was like, you know what? This ain't that bad, but it's bad. Like, it's not that bad, but it's bad. What's colder, Chicago or Ohio? Probably Chicago. I'm gonna go with Chicago. Chicago? Yeah, it's a little nasty. I've been to both. <laughs> I've been to both. I don't know. Ohio might got Chicago. Maybe it was just the time of year I was there. Uh, I went out there. I think I was there in like November. Um, but it was cold in November now, but not colder than it was in Ohio. Yeah. So. Well, I know I wouldn't last. I'm a coast boy I'm from Cali. Only been to Cali and Orlando. I like to stay here breezy. <laughs> What's up? You out here right now in Oklahoma. It ain't that bad in Oklahoma, though. It ain't that bad. Oh, so you gonna walk around here with no shirt on? I ain't say all that now. <laughs> man, so, Brandon, talk to us, man. Where are you from for the people that don't know? So, uh, I'm a local guy. So, I'm from uh, 405, Oklahoma City. 405? 405. That's where the best come from. Just for all the Tulsa dudes out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He must have got no Tulsa teammates. <laughs> no, I do have yeah, Tulsa teammates. <laughs> I just had to set it straight. Yeah, no uh, doubt. Went to Bishop McGinnis. It's a smaller school down, 5A. Um, really good school. Uh, academically, good sports. Uh, put me in a really good spot. So, beyond blessed and, and couldn't be more thankful. So, 5A to the Big 12. Is that unheard of? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, say so. I say so. I mean, there's not like, I mean, there's definitely dudes who've uh, who played in my like 5A 
who've gone to the Big 12 and done good things. And, uh, like, it wasn't too bad. Like, it wasn't just, like, what you're thinking. Like, it, of course, there's a transition between high school and college. Like, there's, that's pretty natural. But, like I said, like, I, I adjusted pretty well and, and pretty fast. So, I don't know. That's all. That's all. Since we're talking adjustments and all, what's one of the things that you had to adjust to? Probably besides physicality. Yeah. Yeah, I took that from you. <laughs> probably, probably the mental side of the game. I had no. I, I mean, in high school, I was just a lot bigger than everybody, a lot faster. You're still a lot bigger than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just so much bigger, and I mean, it just kind of came super easy. So like little things, like technique, like didn't really have to play with much technique in high school. Mm. Just realistically. Uh, speed and size kind of took care of that um, and I kind of had to get over a God-given ability because when you get to like that level everybody there has God-given abilities that got them there. so there came a point where I had to get over the whole mental game and it's still like a work in progress you know it's like kind of one of the biggest things uh, there's like the whole of course physicality side that he had to adjust to which is it's gonna happen when you're playing against dudes who I mean I can't think I don't think there was an offensive lineman who lifted more than me when I was in high school. But then right. I get to OU, and then the guys like Creed Humphrey or or Bray, like just big dudes, just, <laughs> just. ginormous. <laughs> kind of, they gave me fits. Ely too, just playing for Baltimore right now. Like, yeah, going against guys who are now in the NFL, like definitely gave me fits there at the beginning. Just like it's my first time playing football since like my senior year, and then got out to fall camp. And it was pretty ugly there for the first week. Uh, give me a story. Give me a story where you were like. Yo, what am I? What did I get myself into? So last year we did uh, right before fall camp. We had this little OTA period, and it was good adjusting, like good, just kind of adjust to the game. And kind of my first thing in OTAs is that I doubt I thought OTAs were kind of just like walk through, maybe a little faster. I get like a little faster, but I came over and I just got absolutely just blown up by some lineman going 100. <laughs> percent And then that's when like that was the first time I was like, okay, maybe I need to. Speed it up a little bit, but when we got to fall camp, uh, you was ready. It was, I was ready, but not at the same time. Like <laughs> it, I wasn't ready for the guys like Creed or pulling guards. I wasn't seeing any of it. I was just getting absolutely just messed up those first couple of days. And but like after you kind of get used to it, and then I don't know. But fall camp is a different animal. Like it's love it, love it, but it's a, it's a, it's a different. <laughs> now you, uh, we've had some. We've had a lot of linebackers on the show. We've had uh, my boyfriend Shannon on here. We had Jordan Evans on here. So it seems like the linebacker core there is usually got it, got it out for them, but they go through the fire because it makes them good there. So it yeah. sounds like y'all got a good uh, situation there with the linebacker core. No, nah, it's really good, especially from inside and outside. Even though we're kind of like our own separate groups, we're pretty much one together at the same time. So, right. I mean, the inside linebackers, uh, Coach Odom, he's doing a really good job. All those guys, like... Deshaun, uh, DU, Brian, all those dudes, uh, and even guys in my position group like Nick or Marcus or uh, even the new Clayton, the new freshman. Like it's gonna be a lot of it's really good year. Uh, I'm really excited. So especially for the linebackers, We're extremely excited for us. Man, so one thing I didn't even, I guess, didn't even cross my mind is you signed basically during a pandemic. Am I right? Or right before the pandemic? Right before it. Right before the pandemic. Yeah. How, how did that affect your recruiting period? It, it didn't really affect it that much. Uh, I will say, like, the we day... you pretty the, much committed? Yeah. So I committed uh, to OU, and then, like, I wasn't thinking about there was going to be any pandemic anytime soon. So, yeah. <laughs> like, Neither did I. <laughs> we just heard, uh, I mean, got to signed, and then... I got a phone call from the coach, who or my coach, and he said, hey, come down for a spring practice. And literally the second I got down there is when they, like, oh, you shut down, like, canceled practice, sent everybody home. And I was like, what? And then that's when my school got shut down. And I'd say, like, that's about the only thing it did affect was me going to go see a practice. But other than that, like, everything else was sold up. Pretty much. Until we got there, it was pretty, I mean, it was pretty, they were really strict, like, when we first got there, really weren't supposed to leave our room. We had a quarantine for a couple of weeks, uh, and then started lifting. It was an adjustment lifting with masks, Bro, especially in the sun. Like it's already hard it to bad. breathe without it. It was bad. Did they have the conditioning? It was so bad. 
I don't know if it helped. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. Those first couple workouts, see, like, I'd made the really bad decision of not running outside. So yeah. when I trained before high school or college, I was just running in this little facility, indoor facility. And, like, I thought I was in really good shape coming out, uh, like, super good shape. And then as soon as, like, that first, first week, I think it was a first Thursday, and we ran, like, Gassers, half gassers. <laughs> and it was real ugly. Like I was not ready for the sun. <laughs> the not, sun. I was not ready for the sun. So I'm definitely getting ready for it now, especially before we go back here in the next two, three weeks. So hopefully it gets pretty sunny out. I'm not trying to run in the rain. Facts. But, uh, this Oklahoma weather wilding out, bro. Like for, for real. But I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but I wanted to know, like, during the pandemic, what did you do to stay ready? Did you ever feel like y'all weren't going to have a season at any point? For a second. At the beginning, I thought it was going to be like a domino effect. Like when I think it was the MAC was the first conference to pull out. And I was like, oh. I mean, at first I was like, eh, it's whatever. And then like you just hear rumors around saying like, oh, it's not looking good. Or like you hear something from a coach and like it may not sound like you may interpret it in just a really weird, awful way. So like there was a second there where I didn't think so, but then the closer we got to the season, I'd say about when we hit fall camp is when I knew for sure. Like, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. Whenever an Ivy League pulled out, I was like, oh, they yeah, smarter yeah, than everybody. Yeah. It's over with. Yeah, everybody yeah. go yeah. cancel. Yeah, I don't know. They're, Ivy League a little different. Like, I have friends who play in the Ivy League, and they're just, I feel so bad for them. They're so bad. Like, I have one of my best friends. She plays soccer. And, like, oh, it's bad. Yeah. It's so bad. And I have a buddy who plays at Harvard. I don't know. I couldn't imagine having to play for a school like that, or yeah. just in that league. Like no disrespect. To anyone. Just I playing mean, wise, they they got a little. They're more strict. Way say. more strict. Way more strict than, than what it is. For right. Us. But gotcha. for, your, for your question, I don't even to stay keep myself ready. I mean, I was kind of doing my same thing. Like it was at first, it was fall camp. That's when we first really got into like COVID and like having to practice with masks on. And like socially distancing, or socially distancing when we eat, stuff like that, or all the COVID tests we had to take. Like, I mean, there was that part of it. But then, like, especially when we got into the school year, when. But when did y'all get to the school? School. We got there. They like, pushed our day back so much. I think we got there probably late June, because we got a solid month of workouts in before we had to before OTAs and yeah. the OTAs were about a week, and then after that week was straight into fall camp, which was like three, four weeks, which was like, it was pretty ugly. That's what I'm saying. Like the time between, I think, what would we say the world shut down around February? Something like that? May. May. Yeah, no, May. I feel like it was late February. Or, or March. March. Probably yeah, March. Baby Jay's birthday party, which was big. You and did it, have his birthday after, party. And they just shut it down. Bye. Yeah. So it was May. No, March, 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 yeah, yeah, spring yeah. break, spring break, spring break. Cause I went to spring break, I'm a counselor. So I went to spring break, uh, break. And didn't go back to work. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know why I couldn't think. Boy, yeah, this I don't been know why I said May. <laughs> May, March. You're better than February. <laughs> <laughs> they both got M's. But like between March and June, what did you do during that period? March and June. Because you clearly was at the crib. Yeah. Yeah. So at first it was just doing at home workouts, and then uh, and then we snuck into my high school. Let's go to go lift. Let's go. And, uh, <laughs> The gym I was working out at to before college, they reopened, uh, and then we just started working back out there. Till. But that's fire, though. Like, like, I'm not condoning sneaking you anywhere, right? And I know you're not either. No. You know what I'm saying? But, like, the things you have to do to get to the level that you're at the is different. For. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where, I, like, I had. Like, I couldn't, I knew, like, I could get the work done with at-home workouts. Like, it's just a matter of how hard you wanted to work, but, like. It's not the same. I, yeah, it just wasn't the same. Like I just, there were so many other things I wanted to do. Like, and I got so tired of doing push-ups and squats. <laughs> and, and, and but then, like, dang, I can't remember if Jordan said this on air or off air. But do you remember when he talked about where he had to go work out during the pandemic to get ready for the Bengals season? Oh yeah, well, him and was I it had. on air or off air? Because I don't, don't want to sure. air it if it's right. yeah. I don't know for sure, but, but pretty much like. Jordan had to do things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was on air. But he had to go places that he at first wasn't allowed to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In order to keep getting his work in, 
because, you know, at the end of the day, he's still on a contract. Yeah. And he still got a family. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so to hear him say what he said and then to hear you say, like, yo, I had to go find a way to go get it in. Yeah. You know, because if you get bored of it, yeah, you could do it. But if you get bored of it and then you lose a step, not the now, same results. now maybe yeah. your freshman year is not as cold. Yeah. Which nah. we'll get into. I'll say it on air. Like, I jump the fence every single day. <laughs> like, like there's, a, there's, like, a big fence lining our uh, where our field house is. And I just parked right across the street, like, put my bag on, just jump the fence every day, and then Good make that it. second jump. But do, do they have any other football players at OU? Yeah. We have a couple. They were, I mean, right now? Yeah, there's a couple. I went to my high school. Yeah. Oh, really yeah, they're doing it? They were not all together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there, was, there was only a couple people in there every day. But they didn't so. go through a pandemic, bro, so no. shout out to you. You no. feel me? Like, <laughs> you feel me? So, ah, oh, man, I, I don't know, man. Like, sometimes you got to do different things to get different results, man. And you did that. Yeah, so, you, do that. you know, you know, with asterisks on it. All right, with asterisks yeah. on it. So, all right. So then, what was your first sport, and what was your first love? So, first sport was probably soccer. I mean, it's just a sport you can just put any kid in at a young Facts. age. Facts. Just run around and help yeah. you kick it. But then I'd say probably first sport that I loved was was probably football. Uh, just because like I'm a football kid. I was born into a football family, so I mean, I was kind of. I was really immersed in that whole thing. The you whole didn't say this off air. Football family. Football family. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, yeah, what my, we got? My dad played in the NFL for almost a decade. So uh. for the early part of my football career, that was kind of like traveling around with him. And Bro. Being in that, being in that environment, it was. Josh, it was, I blame you for me not knowing this bit of information. <laughs> hmm. So, father's name. Denard, Denard Walker. Denard Walker. Where'd he play? Played at LSU. LSU. Yeah, he's bound to go to the, <laughs> to go to the league. You play at LSU. Yeah. So it, it makes even more sense now that you jumped the fence. Like, y'all not about to stop me from this work. Y'all know what I've been through? I traveled yeah, the whole chasing, world to see this. <laughs> I'm chasing this, right? You don't even know who my, who, my, who my rabbit is. Like, I can't not go do this. Yeah. What position did he play? He played corner. So. Okay. It's, uh, you know, I kind of make fun of him just because, like, I was so much bigger than him at such a young age. Yeah. I think it's probably seventh, eighth grade. That's I, mean. I was bigger than when he ever was. So. Yeah. So then Six. him at corner, you at linebacker, did you ever want to play corner or? Absolutely not. No? Uh, I was too big. I always knew I was going to be too big. And I was, I kind of stuck on the line because I was, I grew up so fast. So, like. I was such a big kid, and I don't know if, like, it's the same way now, but they made us wear, like, at the beginning of every season, they made us walk in uh, to some little sports facility and weigh in, and if you were above a certain weight, like, they put a little sticker on your helmet saying you can't carry the ball. And I got oh, the, that was a, what is it called? Is that I, got, I got that sticker every single year. What did they, and they gave you a certain name, too, right? And you had to ugly on the line. I know they did that in California when you played Pop Warner. Oh. I, I forgot what it's called. Uh, you know, you look at you got a I'm sticker, never gonna know. got a sticker, and then I got put on the line. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it so much. But I did. I mean, but I did enjoy. I could play defensive line. That's where, like, probably where it began. Yeah. Like just me being a more defensive kid. Uh, but yeah, definitely playing on the line for, for years and years was was pretty bad. I I, <laughs> I did hate it. I'll be honest. So was that like all pop Warner? You feel yeah, like? it was pretty. It was pretty much all little league, and I think. He's Sixth grade, school. seventh grade. I don't think I played eighth. I didn't do it in eighth grade. So like, <clears throat> even in junior high, they were making you wear that sticker, or like they yeah. had a rule for that. I mean, it really wasn't a rule. I was just bigger than everyone. But I did play. I'd say more of like maybe a tight end. It was probably going between like tackle and tight end. Okay. And high or in middle school, but I did play more. Defense, so I feel like that's kind of trash that they, they do that sticker stuff. They could have given you the ball. You could have been moving miles I out. I could there. have. I could have. <laughs> I could have. Right? No, I hated it. There was a point where, like, thank God my mom is the way she is. Like, I wanted to quit so bad at one point just because, like, I was so over it. Over it. Like, I was like, I'm done. Put my hand in the ground. Like, this is so, <laughs> so boring. But then there came a point where my mom literally asked me. She was like, Brendan, you're probably going to grow to be, like, 6'2". Because I played basketball at the time as well. There we go. This is, this is your basketball connection. Yeah. <laughs> I played basketball at the time as well, so I was kind of split for the longest time between football and basketball. 
Hey, and no then, sticker for basketball. Yeah, no that's sticker. What, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There's no sticker for basketball, but like I've always had, I love all my coaches. Like I say this not to be for any coach, but like, I just got thrown at the five. Like yeah. I just got thrown, and there was a point, especially with older. It was, it was fine. It yes. was fine. The younger I was, but like as soon as I got older and everyone started growing, but you didn't. <laughs> I wasn't growing as much as I was. Right. So like it was kind of, it was like, I'm the size of a point guard, saw shooting guard, but I'm had the skills of a center. Like it, was, it got yeah. pretty ugly there for a little bit. And that's what's, and that's why when you said the sticker thing, because this is the first time I'm hearing the sticker thing. Yeah. And so I'm like. Could you imagine if they had stickers in basketball? Like, I mean, low key they did, but they don't in terms of just eyeballing you. Oh, you're big, go to the post. But you know, at some point you're able to grow out of that. And I don't, I don't feel like football does that where you can just, you know, like I don't see yeah. no big behind, you know, <laughs> big dude just playing quarterback. Like, yeah. I mean, nah, you don't get lucky like that. <laughs> I get it. No, I get the whole sticker thing. Like, I was a big kid, so and I was pretty athletic too. So it probably would have been kind of ugly. Yeah. Know, especially with some of the kids when I was going against. Like, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. I remember them being like tiny. So I get it, and it was unfortunate at the time, but it went away in middle school. And then, but I just happened to play on the line in seventh grade. But that went away real fast. So <laughs> it went away real fast. My mom told me to speak up for myself. So eventually I did. And, so the rest is history after that. Nice, nice. Well, in terms of, you know, you said basketball, uh, football is your, uh, your first love. You did sprinkle a little bit of basketball in there. Yeah. How long did you hoop for? So I played basketball pretty much uh, forever. I can't tell you. I played for a long time. I stopped playing sophomore year. Uh, I just couldn't. It wasn't as fun as what it used to be. And so like I went through middle school. I was like really into AAU. Uh, the whole traveling, I loved it so much. Just going to all these different kinds of our states, I made a whole bunch of really good relationships, played a whole bunch of really good teams, and it was so much fun. And but my mom, right before going into high school, asked me like, "What is it you want to focus on, either football or basketball?" And I did have to think about it, and then there was that realization that I'm not going to be six, 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 six seven. ten. Yeah, yeah. I kind of cap. I'm going to cap out around six two, six three. So. And I'll never get to play point guard. And I just knew that. So I made the decision to kind of not give up basketball, but focus, put everything in the football. Yeah. And just then, put your eggs somewhere else. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Dominique Franks, another OU guy, he said, because he actually had offers to go play basketball. Yeah. Division one basketball. Offers to play Division one football. But he said, because what is what is Franks? Five nine? Yeah, he like, yeah. Maybe. 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 Right? And he said, I knew I wasn't gonna go to the league at this size. Yeah. As a point guard. But I knew I could make it to the league at my size. You know, in football. As a corner. Yeah. As a corner. And so that's when he decided to focus on football. So it is it's I mean, obviously you had good guidance and uh so did he. And it's just good to hear guys being real with themselves yeah and 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 looks like you made the right decision yeah you know what sure. i'm saying yeah no, so <laughs> definitely did i mean it just i think it's kind of funny how everything worked out now just because i mean sophomore year, i'd say about freshman years when i stopped when i knew like something was wrong i was like i wasn't enjoying it i mean aau was pretty intense and really competitive but like it was a lot more fun when i yeah. got to high school it just wasn't fun anymore right yeah. And my skill level went down so much. I'd be honest, I stopped trying. Yeah. I was just, I was just out there. Just, I was like that football player who played basketball. So, like, I'll let you know how I was playing. It was yeah. Extremely physical. Just, <laughs> you know, like, the worst shooter. My ball, punk. My, it, was, it was really bad. It was like, I probably fouled out almost every game. Yeah. Or pretty close. So. And it was okay. Cause it was okay. Because that's I, your job. I knew, I knew I had no future in basketball. So, mm -hmm. I was kind of out there. But... There definitely came a point where I had to sit there and like have a realization that maybe I need to stop playing basketball, which I don't say it's for everybody. That's just for me. I'd say, I mean, kind of looking back on it, I probably wish I could have dragged it out all throughout high school, but I mean, it worked out, but I definitely needed to focus on football a lot more. And uh, that sacrifice I made definitely paid off 
While I got you here, I mean, even though you didn't play basketball that long, in the football locker room, right, with guys that play basketball, is there ever a fear that football players don't go play basketball because they're afraid to get hurt for football? Nah, no? Because it'd be, it be guys that play football that can really hoop, but they don't go hoop. And I'm like, yo, why you don't come hoop? You know what I'm saying? So that's why that question kind of usually be the other way around. Because I'm going to play both, but it, I, it was a lot of people who played basketball like, I ain't going to play football because I ain't trying to get hurt from basketball. Right. So that's usually the way when football players, we, they physical. We already there. So it was like, we're going to play anything. But I ain't, I mean, yeah, I'm not talking about getting hurt like that. Like, like somebody going to hurt me. I'm thinking more like, you know, I don't want to get hurt. Like, for, I guess I'm thinking about a specific instance where there was a football guy, I mean, 6'5", 6'6", you know, he had just signed to go play. Uh, I think he was about to sign to go play um, football, but he needed to stay in shape. You know what I'm saying? Like he was not in the right shape he wanted to be or needed to be, and he had an opportunity to go and make an impact on the basketball team. Great opportunity to get in shape, right? Yeah. That's what I would think, and he didn't do it. Now it panned out for him. You know, he, I'm pretty sure he got a little freshman award in his conference, things like that. It panned out for him. But, you know, that's what made me made me ask that. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, what about when did you realize in football, like, okay, I've arrived. I might have a future in this. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say. When arrived. you was getting stickers, yeah. probably. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't say. I definitely wouldn't say arrived. I just definitely saw my kind of like, I don't want to be. I, I just hear my coach in my head whenever you say arrived just because. I never want to be in that place where, like, mentally stop. Like, you just can stop. So ah. I just hear my coach when you say arrived. But um, if you're no, here, you're not going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I definitely say that the, there was the moment when I thought, like, when I really knew, like, I could really take football somewhere. It was probably uh, at the end of my junior year, like, right when we got into the playoffs. Like, I'd had a really good season, or not even, or right, probably right after the season. Uh, I didn't get my offer till late January, but uh, like right after the season is when I started to get the influx of coaches following me on Twitter. And then that's when I finally went to my coach and asked him like how many, like, what were my stats? Cause I was still trying to make my film from that year. Right. And he was like, you had so many tackles. And he's like, you had 17 sacks. And I thought about it. Like I didn't even realize that right. I had 17. So, I mean, there came a point where like, okay, I really can do this. And then like the first offer came. And then after that, it just kind of exploded. And Everybody remembers their first offer. Right. There. Who was it? It was SMU. SMU. That's a yeah. pretty good first one. Yeah, SMU. It was, that was definitely something. Like, I can admit that when I got my first offer, I cried. I <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> like, I knew. I wish my coach didn't spoil it for me. Yeah. Like, I just, <laughs> it was so bad. It was the most nerve-wracking couple hours because, like, I had been talking to this coach for I don't know how long. And then. Like, he comes to my school, watches me lift, uh, said bye. He goes on an airplane, goes somewhere else. Then I get a phone call from my coach, like, 30 minutes later. He says, yeah, he's going to offer you tonight. And I'm just sitting there waiting for this phone call. Like, right. Didn't want to take a shower. I just, like, sat I there. ain't missing this call, bro. I sat there. <laughs> and then, like, he finally called. Or he said, call him. Called him. Offered me. And, like, I remember crying. Anybody and, get your video of that? I need footage, uh, man. I was at home, but I did call my mom immediately after that because she's been through like this entire process with me, and then like me and her are sitting there crying on the phone, and then 15 minutes later, I got another offer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 15 yeah, probably 15, 20 minutes later, I got a call from another coach, got another offer. And then, oh, you got to tell me where? Yeah, Eastern Michigan. It's the Eastern yeah. Michigan. Yeah. So you I'm think reaching? You think they heard that you was getting offered? Like how? Because I don't know. I mean, how does that go? Because you get one and then 15 minutes later, and then that's when they start coming in, right? Once yeah. one offers usually. Yeah, I, as soon as I posted the first one, I got a text message, and they said, well, floodgates are open, exclamation point. And then that's what exactly what happened, and it, it kind of exploded. Like, it really exploded there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd say, actually, I mean, at first, it was pretty light. I got my first couple offers, uh, SMU, Eastern Michigan, a couple other schools. And then I just kind of stopped there for a little bit. And then I took one visit and then just, I probably, I, I think it was going to the visit. I think I got six. Oh my gosh. So in the car ride, I was in there with my dad. 
picking up the phone. Thank you. <laughs> the phone. <laughs> Thank you. But it was it was that for the entire ride. And the way back, I think it was like four or five. Oh my gosh. So, so like, was, I was gonna ask because I hear a lot about you saying mom help you with decisions. I was wondering, so like, how did dad help you with like your decision to like stay home or anything like that? Was he helping you with that, or was he kind of letting you just? I'd say, Choose your own way. I'd say my dad's really big. I'm just kind of like letting me do my own thing. And I was pretty, I was pretty transparent with my parents about me wanting to make my own decision for myself. And my mom and dad were really understanding. And especially my mom, like she, I mean, she told me I could go anywhere. I mean, she would find a way to get there to see me, go see my games. And so I that's appreciated dope. that. Yeah, that's dope. Um, but even like the, I took visits to places outside and and I'd go to visits in places here. And at first, I was my big thing was just getting out of Oklahoma. Yeah. I was like, didn't want to be here. And I, I was, to be honest, I didn't think OU was going to ever offer me. So like, I talked to him, but I really wasn't. I didn't think it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wanted to get out of state. Bro, OU, oh, y'all be late. Everybody we talk to. to inside gyms. OU be late offering cats, bro. What is it? Don't ask me. No, no, no. So with that being no, no. said, you had your mind set to go. What made you stay? I mean, see, I he's like, it's before I asked that, where were you wanting to dream go offer? Of <laughs> dream it? offer. Uh, there were some. I mean, there were some schools in California that I really wanted to go to. But he he not gonna disclose. Yeah. Don't disclose. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where, where you wanted to go. What side of that? There was a I, there was a Midwest school that I wanted to go to. A couple of schools on the West Coast. I was more looking towards the West Coast, right? That area. So where it's warm at. Yeah, where it was pretty warm. Weather was really nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but. I mean, it worked out. I kinda Hawaii. Kept, <laughs> ooh, I don't know about that. Uh, no, it just came to a point where like, I'd go to these places outside, and once I kind of came to the realization that everywhere just kind of has the same stuff when you look at it. I mean, some places are nicer, but in reality, it's just they all do the same thing. So I kind of got over that hump because the first couple of schools, like, it was just little minute things. Like, I went to a school that had a like an area just for shakes, like just had shakes, just for snacks that I didn't see in this previous school. And You're like, was, huh, this is nice. That was the coolest thing, thing ever. Thing ever. <laughs> like, everyone asked me, like, how was the visit? And that's the first thing they said. Like, they had a little <laughs> shake bar that you can just make shakes and just pick snacks up whenever you want. I thought it was the coolest thing. That is cool, bro. <laughs> then you realize, like, so does everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, it may not be right there, but uh, it's somewhere. And uh, I just kind of wanted, especially like for like life after football, I kind of assumed that I probably won't be living in Oklahoma. And my sister's pretty young, so I'm just trying to like stay. I that came apart. I really need to stay close to family, especially when I start taking visits to in school state or in school colleges. In state colleges. In state yeah. colleges. Uh, I was like, yeah, I really need to just stay at home. How old's your little sister? She's 12. There you go. So can't, can't take a big yeah. brother from her. Can't. See, and I, 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 like I live 30, 40 minutes away from like them. And right. I get phone calls from my mom telling me how much my sister misses me. Right. And, and you're like, like, uh, like, arms reach yeah, away. Like pretty close. Like, I couldn't imagine if I lived. Right. Gosh, like, I think the school I wanted to go to is probably like 24 hours away. Yeah. Like, it would be pretty, like, it would be, I never get to see my sister. No. Yeah, away from them breaks. So I definitely like made the decision to stay in state and then committed to OU. Look uh, at you being a good. So oh, you got your sister to thank. Hey, y'all heard y'all heard him. Y'all heard him. Yeah. <laughs> thank little sister. Ha hopefully, hopefully, I'm trying to get on some sports. She just no offense to dancers, but she dances. I just, that's, the new, <laughs> that's the new way. Yeah. <laughs> she a TikToker. Sadly, yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got an 11 year old sister too. She about to turn 12. That's just the wave, like. I'm getting her in basketball, and I tell her something like, if you go as hard in basketball as you do with these TikToks, you'll be, yeah. you'll be dumb. You'll be cold. <laughs> That's the same thing, like, I told my sister, like, we're, or just not even, like, if she does volleyball or soccer, I want to do soccer or whatever she wants yeah. to do, just, just get away. I know she got some size on her. Oh, she's massive. She's probably, <laughs> <laughs> my sister is 5'10". Oh, five, ten. 12 years old? 12 years Sound old. like Talia. Like Bro, huge. She's ginormous. She's a walking offer in some sports. She doesn't even know. <laughs> like, ginormous. I mean, if worst comes to worst, like I just tell my sister to go row. I yeah. 
the worst comes to worst, but I need my sister to keep up yeah. the lineage. Something right. <laughs> yeah, keep up. She has, she has the genes. Listen, she has the genes. Keep right. up the culture. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I was like, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> kind of put it on my sister, and she think, thinks I'm joking, which is the funny part. Like, I'm like, dead serious. <laughs> I can tell how she could think you're joking, because you're, like, serious, but you're, like, with a <laughs> smile on your face, so I can see that. Gosh. You're going to have to look at her and... Stern. When she gets Just, older. I definitely now she's in middle school. Like it's when you need to start getting in something. Like yeah. kind of finding what you want to do because it's gonna be a little too late when you get to high school. Right. So, I don't know, but even if whatever she wants to do, like I'll support regardless. No, no doubt, no doubt. Like if my daughter chooses to dance, then cool. But I'm gonna try to move her away from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Away. You know. <laughs> no, but it sure. is what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. Just. Whatever she wants to do, I'll support. Hopefully, she wants to do some type of sport. Yeah. I'd love to come visit my sister while she's playing some sport. Softball. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. He's like, ugh. Yeah. Cringe. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know about I don't that. believe I don't you. Know <laughs> I don't think baseball runs in my family. Yeah. Any type of sport like that. And yeah. It was, I played one year, and it wasn't too pretty. Ah. So, a little biased there. Bad, yeah. Yeah. And I don't think my mom would let her. My yeah. mom, that was the one sport my mom would so, not want So mom play. must have played any something. So, I mean, she did track in high school. There that's we go. That, what you mean? That's good. I mean, it's good, yeah, but, I mean. Oh, well, you did a little bit of track, yeah, right? Did a little bit, yeah. How long? A little bit. I did uh, two years. I played freshman, sophomore. I did freshman, sophomore year, and then tried to give me a throw. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I refused to. I refused to. Tell them I'm trying to get fast to put me on the track, coach. Yeah. And that's what I did. That's what I did tell him. I was like, yeah, I can't do this. Like, <laughs> I remember getting into it with the coach one time. Like, I'm just gonna be candid. Like, he's my guy now, but yeah, he had been trying to get me a throw for like a couple of years. I told him no every single time, yeah. and I knew I knew this was gonna be a bad year just because they kept trying to, like, they would like on Monday they were like, hey, every other day go throw, and then I'd just be like, I don't know about that one. Right. But we got to the first meet, and I like saw on the sheet like shot put or discus or whatever it was. Right. I was like, ah, I'm just going to go. Just going to go warm up for the four by one. Yeah. And then as soon as I went to leave, I just heard my name get called by the main coach. Hey, Brendan, go, go warm up. I like, went over there. Like, I threw the discus one time. I just walked right off. Me and my coach got into it. I said, yeah. I'm not wasting my time. Right. Did the track meet. But it, it, I don't like, I mean, y'all good now, but I don't like yeah. that he didn't really prepare you for right. that. Yeah, like, like I... I don't know. Like, I mean, I I knew it was coming, but at the same time, like I wish like it would have been a little bit more open. Like, yeah, that's you know, that's gonna, where I'm coming from. You're gonna throw at this tree at this meet, but that way it saves you from walking I'm off. Like, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sign you up. I hope you choose to do it. Like, Just give it a shot for me. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was pretty bad, but I mean, I hate to say it, it's clear right after. It. I mean, I, that's when I knew, like, yeah, maybe just focus primarily on football and then went straight to off-season lifts at the, for the football. And then I was done. And yeah. Strictly football after that. So then the question before we went down this rabbit hole, great rabbit hole, um, when did you realize you arrived and then oh. first offers and things like that? So, you, I mean, shoot, I kind of stopped counting around 14 offers. Yeah. Four when did OU come? OU came. OU was my one of my last offers. Again, uh, super late. I mean, yeah. I mean, so like, were you verbally at all committed or anything? Or you just were still wait? There were. I mean, there were yeah. other schools. Like I, I had committed to other places, and then like just didn't work out. But OU kind of came in there, and at first, I, I mean, I, I was really felt really ill towards OU in the first place. So I was never like, I want this offer. Yeah. Man. It's just because of, like, I had, was recruited by him, and then, like, it just stopped. Yeah. Like, I didn't know at the time that someone else had committed in that spot, so I was kind of salty. It's like, mm. my mom was pretty salty, so that's kind of how it was, but um, I kind of relayed that to the coaches. I was, like, very early, like, at the beginning of the whole process between uh, me and OU, like, they were very open with, like, like, it was a whole new staff, and, and to find out that I was one of the first... Uh, offers for the like the twenty my class in state it meant a lot and then just developed a relationship with Grinch and Adam and Riley right and I, there came a point where like I knew like the, what they stand for.
for. I just, right. Like, the culture at OU is something that I wanted to be a part of. And I didn't think any other school that I was recruited by, like, no disrespect, just that's a standard at OU that no other school would match. And the standard that OU had is something that I wanted to be a part of. So I made that decision to. Hey, they, like I said, they always send in their linebackers. Always. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Well, one of the things that struck out to me um, when I did my Google homework on you was that you had three stars. How did you acquire them stars and what could you have done? Would you have done anything different to try to add those extra two stars? I, I really don't think that I would do anything different. Um, of course, like three star, I mean, of course, when you get a five star, uh, I think unfortunately, like there's, I'll say it, like I don't think stars matter that much. I don't think they matter that much either, but you can't be a one star at OU, can yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, which is like a sad reality. Uh, I feel like sometimes they're pretty good at grading, like with those stars and stuff. I mean, I get it. Right. But I don't know, there's just too focused on stars, but. Talk to him, Brandon. So I what you're saying I, is you're a five-star. In my mind, yes. Dad, let's go. No, Talk I, to him. No, I mean, even I didn't really care about the stars anyways. Like, I kind of went there. and Or at first, I was pretty into it. Like, that was kind of my, I was like trying to get it four-star. That was my goal to get that four-star. Just because all those five-stars have been five-stars since, like, their sophomore years. Like, I was like, eh, I'm kind of over that. Probably not going to get it. So my four star, you're basically a five star. Like, because I, how they grade those five stars, from what I know, is like, they just handpick just some of those real top four star guys, and then there's only like 10, 15 of them. So I was like, eh, it's a little too late for all that. Right. I just get the four star, and then I kind of going through that whole recruiting process my junior year. Like, there were kind of guys reaching out to me, and I had a team ask me like, hey, are you going to go to these camps? I was like, nah, probably not. Like, I don't want to risk getting hurt. And they said, good, like, we don't care anyways. Yeah. So it made me think, like, I was sitting there wanting these five, these stars this entire time. And they like, didn't oh, even care. I had a coach tell me, like, eh, we don't really care that much. So it kind of made me realize, like, your film does all the talking. Your film is everything. That's a gym, bro. So they don't really care that much. There's got to be a threshold, though, like, they don't really care that much once you hit three stars yeah, or I like, mean, I, I feel know. like there's a threshold. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just know that, I mean, like I had really good film. Like I put a lot of really good stuff on film uh, throughout my tenure of high school. And then, I mean, I mean, grades were there, of course. Like those were really important. But GPA. GPA. GPA was good. Like, what were we talking? I don't like talking about it, but it was good. You don't like it talking was, about it. Was it. Threes. It was in the threes, mid threes. That's what I'll talk. I'll say. Mid threes. Mid okay. Threes. My school was pretty competitive. It was pretty hard. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it definitely got caught up in like trying to keep up with like everyone else because there was a lot of really smart kids at my school. So. Yeah. But, but mid threes, that's great. Because, I mean, it may not be 4.0, 4.3, whatever. But the the reality is, athletes have a stigma. Yeah. And you broke it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I feel like that's dope, bro. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. No, it's definitely like kind of what it was. Just kind of do my own thing. That was kind of my big thing in high school, just with all of it for football. Uh, just kind of being open and honest with like who I was and what I wanted to be. And like, that's another thing, like with other schools, like with what I, what I, what I wanted to do, like they didn't seem like right. they were really genuine about it. Um, and definitely like you... During the recruiting process, you definitely hear the same thing over and over and over again. So yeah. like, there came a point where I didn't know who to trust. <laughs> I didn't know what, like, what was going on. I just heard the same coaches saying the same things. And that's another thing why uh, I made that decision to go to OU. Because they were very honest, and they told me the things that I didn't want to hear. Right. And I think that's something that they even do now. Like, they've been really spot on with just what they told me, what they were going to do in the recruiting process and what they're doing now in the program. Just super spot on. Um, Grinch especially. Dude is intense. Yeah. Love him to death. I mean, definitely he's one of those guys you just want to keep a notebook around just because he says so many things that like I quote think about. Worthy. Quote worthy. Quote <laughs> worthy. The most quote worthy person I've ever met. But that's even <laughs> the entire coaching staff. Like you guys have, you all defense. I don't really know offense too much, but I know right. defensive coaching staff. They're great. Like Coach Tibbs, he's really funny, but also a great coach. Uh, pushes his guys extremely hard. Right. But my coach, Coach Payne, dude, love him to death. Like, I'm so grateful to have him as a coach. And then 
Coach Odom, the guy who recruited me, uh, the inside linebacker coach, dude's intense. Dude, great coach, great person. Uh, I mean, rest of the staff, Grinch, dude's a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love him to death, though. I mean, like, that's somebody that, I mean, kind of the big thing, like, when I owe you, like, I needed someone to help me. Like, I needed a good middle ground between, like, my transition into, from high school to me being an adult. And I felt like that coaching staff had, yeah. had it for you. Had it for me. Like, that's definitely, I mean, that's definitely one thing they pushed me to do is kind of become a man. And I feel like at other places and like seeing guys that I met throughout the recruiting trip, like they, like they kind of seem like kids still. I yeah. Mean, and, but then you go to OU and then you have guys who are, I mean, these are grown men. And that's probably another thing I had to get used to was being around grown men. Like we had a dude in my position group who was like 23. Like Sheesh. old dude, super and, old. And you're, you're on, you went what, like, 17, 18? Like just turned, I was 18, 19 at the time. So. Yeah. <clears throat> having a dude that's like four years older than me and then just older dudes like in high school it kind of ranges between like 15 to 18 it's not that bad right. but then you get to like grown men but then you're like not just grown men physically like these guys are like mentally grown dudes right and there came a point of like maturity like i got there and i just had a huge culture shock i was like i'm so immature just <laughs> i'm so really immature I'm like making excuses for myself. Yeah. Like still doing the same thing I did in high school. So there came a point where I had to grow up really fast. And I think that helped. I mean, definitely people who helped out were like Coach Kane. Uh, even though like me and him at first, it was like pretty ugly just because like he's just a I mean, new coach. I mean, not even that. I mean, just a coach. Like, right. Gonna just being you. a coach. They're yeah. Push you super hard. And you were a freshman, so he had to get in yeah. your bubble. Yeah. So, but like I said, like I. That's probably one of the biggest, like, I'm super grateful to have him as my coach. Like, I couldn't be more thankful to have that man. You're doing something right, Coach Kane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, awesome. But it's crazy you say that because, like, you're talking like you're a junior right now. And you're only going into your sophomore year. That's fire. Nah. So that's, like, within that year. Nah, I did so much growing up. Yeah. I definitely. I mean, I had to. And I had to do what I had to do. And definitely, like, even strength staff. Like, I totally forgot to mention that. Like, Benny... Uh, Kolak, all those guys down there, they're like professionals. And that's definitely one thing they preach is to act like a professional, whatever you do. So if I'm in class, um, act like a professional, carry myself right, show up, do my best every single day. Yeah, you definitely shook my hand really hard like a professional <laughs> when you walked in. <laughs> right. I try to uphold uh, a standard for myself and then, because that's the standard that I was held to when I got to OU. So, I mean, those guys, we had guys like, I mean, older dudes like guys definitely i was so blessed to have guys like older dudes kind of look after me um especially like the in-state older guys right um since a lot of them have been there for so long or some of those older linebackers really took me in um it was so i was really thankful to have guys like them that just kind of took me under their wing and then kind of like helped me mature but in my own way right so i mean it's definitely been worth it but that's kind of one of those things you just have to like especially when you get to that level like, you can't be a little kid playing football at that level. Like you got to right. carry yourself so right from, like, taking care of your body. Like, I'm basically I'm not at home anymore, so, right. I mean, I have to, like, no one's telling me what to eat. Right. Having to eat the right things all the time, having to drink enough water. No one's uh, getting you up for school. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one's, having, no one's having to get me up for workouts. I will say, one of the, when I first got there, uh, they had this rule where you had to get there 15 minutes early. And I got that, I mean, but the caveat is we started 15 minutes early. So you probably should get there 30 minutes early. So I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I had no, so I like, one day I showed up 15 minutes early, like right at, right there on the dot. They just sent me back home. Wow. They said, all right, see ya. And I had to come back later to go on the Stairmaster for an hour. Heard about the Stairmaster. Yeah, we have. Heard I got, had to, they sent me back home, said come back in about an hour. Came back in an hour, had to do the Stairmaster for an hour, and they were fine. I said, see ya, have fun. So, <laughs> you, were you fine? <laughs> <laughs> I was not fine. It was, <laughs> it was hot outside. It was, first you had to do the Stairmaster, so that gets you warmed up, and then you go, and having to walk in almost 100 degree heat to my dorm, and it was just the worst walk, because you're sweaty. And at this time, we were like really into COVID. Like it was really serious. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't go into, we like this at this time, we couldn't even go to the locker room. Like, yeah. Locker room was off limits. 
the pool was off limits. Everything was off limits. So I'm and sitting you dumb hot. Like hot. <laughs> like now, if I go to the Stairmaster, I'll go take a shower first. Yeah. Or go to pool, cool down, go to the cold tub, cool down, go take a shower, clean, like, and then walk over. But having to walk my dirty self over from football facility to the dorm, got pretty old really fast. But I had to deal with it like that entire summer. <laughs> COVID was such a big thing. Yeah, I, I, I understand why, but for sure, it was so for sure, bad. it was it definitely sucked at times. For sure, for sure. Well, we didn't really talk about the academics part of it as we wrap this up, man. What'd you choose to major in, and you know how are you faring with that in football? I hear it's really, really a job once you get to that level. Yeah, uh, my major is biochemistry. Let's go. Uh, I'm majoring in biochemistry. I have a minor in microbiology, and then I'm also doing the whole pre-med thing. Let's uh, go. It's definitely not the most fun thing in the world. Honestly, it's, it's all a about hard, It's a hard pairing. It's, it is a really hard pairing. Um, it's just all about sacrifice, though. So, I mean, there's so many things. Like, I probably didn't play the video games as much as I wanted to. Um, there's definitely so many things I had to sacrifice, and but that's kind of what you have to do when you get there, regardless of whatever major you do. Exactly. I mean, college is school is school, and like, you know, there's some classes that are harder than others. But uh, I definitely had to make a decision for myself that med school is not that forgiving, no, so I had to sacrifice things like going out, uh, hanging out with friends. Uh, studying all the time, staying up late studying, even though now I know you should probably get some sleep. But definitely first of our sophomore year, or first semester was definitely tough, like staying up till like one. Well, you stayed up so like you think you were sophomore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> one, one thirty, uh, definitely staying up till like one, one thirty, like every night. And, yeah. Like, waking up at six to go live. And, like yeah. studying in the free time. I studied so much, bro. I did that throughout my whole master's degree, bro. Like, whole degree, bro. It's uh, uh, but good luck. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the coaches and, and the academic staff and everybody up there, they're super understanding about, like, our schedules. And, uh, I mean, I couldn't be more thankful. So, I mean, they help me out. Um, I help them out. They help me out. Right. They're using me. I'm using them. So Facts. It's... It just, it it's is a win-win, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's a good understanding. It's a good understanding, man. Well, as we wrap this up, man, what message do you have for the future players, aspiring players out there? Yeah. Now, you know, you got a lot more to accomplish. As a matter of fact, Taunt. I'm trying to, <clears throat> what? What, what, what? What should we expect out of my right. man? That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah, before you give him the message, right? What you feel like your goal is for this next upcoming season? Uh, just improvements are being consistent. I just want to be consistent with just me running the calls, me communicating, me being more of a leader. Uh, but I'd say definitely consistency, just from like a whole, just carrying myself, how I carry myself, just every single day, just kind of showing up. I kind of felt like maybe there was times last year where. I'd stack a couple of days of practice, but then I have one really bad practice, which I get like there's going to be bad practices in there, but I feel like I could definitely be more consistent. And like one thing our Coach Grinch said uh, that really stuck with me is that uh, at our best, we're here, but at our worst, we're here. And there's this big gap mm -hmm. and kind of like the consistency bridges that gap to where our best is here, but then our worst is right. maybe right there. Right. So that's definitely something that's really stuck with me. Bring so that worst up a little higher. Yeah, kind of bridge that gap between my best day and my worst day uh, to where probably realistically you're probably going to play inside that gap. So I want that my, uh, my gap to be as, uh, as small as possible so I can be consistent throughout the entire game. I, I like that. I hate to put the pressure on me, but I like the numbers. Is 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 all you going back to the playoffs next year? And we're not stopping at the playoffs. I'll let you know that. Hey, let's go! Uh, you heard it here first. Nah, this is this is the year. Nah, I'll be. We'll see. We'll I see. Got a lot of, you got a lot. You got see. a lot of good pieces. I'll you'll, tell you that. You'll see next January. That's let's all I'm go. Say. That's all let's I'm go. Say. 
We'll definitely have to uh, revert back to this here show <laughs> come next January. <laughs> For sure. All right, so what's your message, man, to the aspiring players, man? I want to get to where you're at. You know, they're maybe freshman, sophomore right now. They're, you know, maybe afraid of what recruitment holds and, you know, they're yeah. listening to this. What's, what's your message? I'd say for anyone you, or any young guys who are probably in the middle of this whole process of trying to get to your main goal of playing college football, I'd say just stay patient and uh, really know that, I mean, God doesn't make mistakes and things will happen on God's time. Uh, for me, I got super, super, uh, especially my sophomore year, got really overwhelmed um, just because I was going on my own time right? and wasn't as patient enough. But I, mean, I kind of think like you got to let the work do. You just kind of got to put your head down and work and things will work out God's way. And it kind of, I mean, it sounds cliche, but like God's plan. Nah, but what I heard you say was put your head down and do the work. You ain't say wait for God and sit on your butt. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kinda, I mean, you got to put, put your head down. That's kind of what I did. There came a point where I just kind of got over it. I just put my head down. Uh, I just put in the work and then just reap the fruit of your benefits later. You just got to have to just kind of push it, kind of have to know that what you want is going to have to, it's going to come in due time. But in due time, you're going to have to. Just grind and grind. And then the most cliche thing is to have fun and never make it more serious than what it is. Yeah. And that's something I definitely wish that I would have known, especially my senior year was definitely, I mean, I definitely was super overwhelmed just because, like, that's a lot of pressure. Like, being an in-state kid going to OU, right. like, having to have to play like that every single game, like, mm. I got super, super, I got really focused on, like, oh, I got to go out here and have like, five sacks a game and then... Well, my numbers went down my senior year because I'm like getting triple, triple teamed every play. Right. Like nobody knows that you were triple teamed every play. Everybody just sees like, oh, they it's just not. look at the stats. But they do. They yeah. see the respect. Yeah. No, they, they see the respect. They definitely do. So, I mean, it all work out. You just got to put your head down. Uh, just work hard, and it'll all work out in, in the best way possible. I'm just a firm believer that God doesn't make any mistakes. So. Yes, sir. You heard it here from the man. Let's go ahead and do this ball signing. That was, uh, he, my man, dropped gems for real. So now you got to go ahead and give us that signature. Boom. When's the last time you touched one of those bad boys? It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a second. Yes, sir. Freshman year, got them already right with the with the with the seed, with the seed. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. See that you talk. I don't know. Love it, love it. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us as we drop gems that we picked up in these gems. Peace. Hey, see ya. That I picked up in these gyms I can't slack, I've been down and back I'm just trying to share a few tales From this thing called life Count my assists, man I swear that basketball really saved my life Yeah, uh, yeah I swear it saved my life Let's go